Oh my god, this is not looking good. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by the 2022 Leapau C2 Portable Monitor. The Leapau C2 is a 15.4 inch portable display featuring mini display port, two type C ports, and a mini HDMI, making it perfect for those who are on the go. With its slim, lightweight design and IPS screen capable of displaying at 178 degree viewing angles, you'll have no trouble working with this display whether you're in the comfort of your own home or traveling. Not only that, but it comes with built in speakers and is compatible with PC, Mac, smartphones, Xbox, PlayStation, Switch, and more. So if you're looking for a good portable monitor, be sure to click the link in the description below. Well, a whole bunch of new information was just posted online, and let's go ahead and start off by talking about Zen 4, specifically the pricing and release date, and then we'll get into the RTX 40 series. So taking a look at the pricing for the Ryzen 7000 series, this was originally posted over on Twitter by Hassan, who works for WCCF Tech, and he stated that the Ryzen Ryzen 9 7950X will be $800 US dollars, the Ryzen 9 7900X will be $550 US dollars, the Ryzen 7 7700X will be $500 US dollars, although I do want to clarify he later stated that that was actually a mistake and it will be $450 US dollars, and then finally the Ryzen 5 7600X will be revealed for $300 US dollars. Now I definitely want to talk about this a little bit more before we move on to the actual release dates and availability for the Ryzen 7000 series because there's been a a lot of talk about this pricing being just way way too high for this series of CPUs and honestly guys I do think that I have to agree I think that especially when you take a look at the Ryzen 7 7700X coming in at $450 while that does technically match the last generation of Zen 3 processors I think that overall the pricing for all these SKUs is just a little bit too high because when you take a look at Zen 3 honestly I think a lot of people and me included would say that Zen 3 was a pretty substantial price increase over Zen 2 and it probably should have been a lot cheaper however Zen 3 was pin compatible with previous AM4 boards meaning that if you had like a B350 or B450 motherboard you could easily slot in a Zen 3 processor and although the pricing of the CPUs themselves went up significantly your cost of entry was actually still pretty low because again you can just go ahead and slot it in into an existing motherboard that's very very cheap and unfortunately when you take a look at the Zen 4 CPUs they don't have that option you are gonna have to buy a brand new motherboard and those motherboards are likely gonna be expensive as well and you're also going to be locked into some pretty expensive DDR5 so you aren't going to have that same situation where you can go ahead and just throw it on an AM4 existing motherboard meaning that overall the platform cost is going to be much much higher when it comes to these Zen 4 CPUs so unless these Zen 4 CPUs bring an absolutely insane amount of performance I think it's going to be a pretty hard sell for a lot of people who are on existing AM4 motherboards or possibly even older so yeah honestly I think it's just a little bit too expensive hopefully AMD does go ahead and revise these prices and it ends up being a little bit cheaper than this but if this is going to be the pricing for the foreseeable future for Zen 4 then I think a lot of budget gamers are going to end up being a little bit disappointed and they're probably going to stick with their existing AM4 platform. Now that being said if AMD does end up coming out and they state that they are going to support the AM5 platform for four years once again it could end up being a wise investment if they do continue to bring some pretty substantial gains every single generation when it comes to their CPUs as that means you could potentially be buying an x670 motherboard and using it for four different generations so we'll wait to see what they have to say exactly on that and what they specify when it comes to you know how many generations they're going to be supporting and how many years they're looking to do so but until then yeah I think it is going to feel just a little bit too expensive also we do have to keep in mind that if AMD keeps AM4 around which it looks like they are going to be doing as long as the pricing is good I think they're still going to be in a pretty good situation overall and there are going to be a lot of good options for buyers whether or not you're looking at Intel or AMD honestly I think you're going to have some really really great options on the market. But speaking of Zen 4, now let's go ahead and talk about the availability because according to another post from Hassan, it looks like the AMD Ryzen 7000 Zen 4 CPUs will hit retail on the 15th of September and X670 motherboards on the 27th of September, B650 apparently on the 10th of October. So that's actually some very, very interesting stuff because it looks like we're actually going to have availability to buy Zen 4 CPUs two weeks in advance before you can actually even run them. You're going to have to wait two weeks to even buy the motherboard. So that's really 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 strange and I went ahead and actually looked into this a little bit more and it looks like the Twitter user Yuri actually stated that apparently the problem has to do with the micro Cody states that quote the public wants Zen 4 so as not to upset the fans and investors it is very profitable to blame the motherboard manufacturers I will even say more motherboard manufacturers are ready for the release 
much earlier. So yeah, at least according to Yuri Bubbly, which if you don't know, he has a lot of information about the Zen CPUs and he actually works on stuff to help you get even more performance out of your Zen processor. So I do think he's at least a somewhat legitimate source and I am gonna take what he says seriously. Yeah, according to him, apparently it's the microcode and that's the reason as to why it's getting delayed. So that's very, very strange, very unfortunate. And so if you are someone who's looking to buy a Zen 4 CPU, I know it's gonna be tempting, but I highly, highly suggest that you don't buy these CPUs at least until there's reviews out and definitely not until you can, you know, try and actually buy the entire system because the last thing you want is to be sitting there holding onto a CPU and then it turns out you have to wait two, three weeks to get a motherboard. And then what if all of a sudden your CPU doesn't work and then you're stuck with a system where maybe the CPU is outside of its RMA. So definitely at least take a look at that, see how long you have to RMA the CPU because you don't want to end up being stuck with a dead product. I always, always never recommend buying any of the parts to your system until you can basically buy them all at once, specifically for that reason. You don't want a dead part that you can't return. So just keep that in mind, even though CPUs are very, very rarely dead. But finally, let's go ahead and wrap this video up by talking about the RTX 40 series. And this time, once again, we're going to be talking about the RTX 4070 as it looks like there's going to be even more drama with this type of GPU. According to a tweet that just came out from Comp87 Kimi, they're still not sure whether or not they want to go with a 12 gigabyte model with 21 gigabits GDDR6X with a power drop 285 watts that will likely score just under 11,000 points in Time Spy Extreme or if they want to go with a 10 gigabyte model with 21 gigabits per second GDDR6X with a total power draw of around 250 watts and a time spike extreme score of less than 10,000. So apparently they're still not 100% sure on where they want to go with the RTX 4070. Now I've said this in the past and I'll say it again, I do truly believe that the RTX 4070 will be 12 gigabytes. I think ultimately AMD's GPUs are going to be way too strong for Nvidia to try and go ahead and get you 10 gigabytes once again. And also they're going to need every little bit of performance they can get if they want to be competitive with RDNA 3 because guys, RDNA 3 is looking absolutely insane. So I really don't think the NVIDIA has any room to be messing around here and they're going to have to give you as much performance and video memory as they possibly can. So I think what you're going to end up seeing is the 4070 will be 12 gigabytes and then they'll take that 10 gigabyte model and bring it in as the 4060 Ti, which honestly that could end up being a really, really good card if the price is right. So I think there's going to be a lot of people out there who are going to be panicking about a 10 gigabyte model. But again, I don't think that's going to be the case. So, you know, before you get in too much of a panic, just expect that the 4070 will likely be 12 gigabytes. And then you'll probably get some sort of more budget version in the 4060 Ti. I think it's going to turn out good. Don't worry, guys. I think you're going to have a lot of really great options from both Nvidia as well as AMD in that $300 to $600 price range. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that Zen 4 is too expensive or do you think it's been priced just right? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and of course i'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so amd and nvidia release new gpus also if you want to see more check out one of these related videos you won't be disappointed